By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today I have a game for you between my brew artificers inventions and it's playing against a white, blue, and green mid-range deck. And we have seen this game, uh, this deck before, I should say. And it is from Rich. He's one of my patrons. I am quickly going to go through both of these decks. Now, if you'd like to go straight to game number one, you probably already know what I'm going to say. You can check out the description below, click on the timestamp, and that will take you straight to game number one. And here we are going to continue with the deck text. This is the deck of Rich, the player that I'm playing today. And like I said in the intro, I've played this deck before. There's a little info card appearing right now. You can click that link if you want to see that game. But let's now focus on today. So he's playing with white, blue, and green and you could also say this is a flyer stack because all his creatures have flying and one of the cards that is really standing out here is this very flavorful telekinesis card from legends it's two blue it's an instant and it reads target the creature deals no damage during combat this turn creatures become tapped and may not untap or the creature i should say as normal during its controller's next untap two untapped faces and um you know rich actually explained to me he said you know i wanted to put in some flavorful timmy cards in the deck and you really succeeded with this telekinesis it's a very cool card and this happens more often in old school than you think that you have a card that's actually quite useful but because of a certain mana cost there's simply another and a better option obviously here the mana cost two blue a counter spell is also two blue so most people will pick counter spell over telekinesis you can even say that prodigal sorcerer has the same problem the timmy is one blue and two surrender Pafrit also in this deck one blue and two um, you see the same thing with Royal Assassin. Royal Assassin, two black and one. Hypnotic Spectre, often chosen over the Royal Assassin for two black and one. But it is nice every once in a while to try out these other cards. And then you kind of discover, actually I do sometimes, that these other options are actually quite powerful in their own way as well. Now another really nice card here that I want to point out is the beautiful Air Elemental that's in that deck. And also you see that Time Elemental. I talked about that it in the, the other video where we saw this deck as well, but I just want to briefly mention it again this is an italian sarah angel so it's a common misprint well it's actually not that common it's quite rare but it's a known misprint let me put it like that so i'm really hoping that we get to see that card hitting uh hitting the board this time around because the last time we didn't see this card and we didn't see telekinesis so keeping my fingers crossed uh, and i really hope to to see them today so let's take a look at my deck the deck that i'm playing with today is artificers inventions and it's in blue white artifact deck or should i say white blue artifact deck anyway it's named after two key creatures that are very good and talented with artifacts two artificers themselves sage of latinam and argivian archaeologist and you can see here that i've put three sage of latinam in and why this creature is just incredibly important for this deck if you look at a card like mana vault i can drop it for one i can tap it for mana and then before it deals damage to me i can actually sack it to the sage and draw an extra card i mean how good is that furthermore sage of latinam also gives me the advantage when my opponent uses artifact removal. I simply use my sage and to sacrifice the target of my opponent so that I get to draw a card. So he loses a card, I lose a card, but I get to draw a card in return. I mean, that's value. Um, hopefully, we um, you get to see the sage really in action because sometimes players uh, have the tendency to just get rid of the sage as quickly as possible and that's obviously a problem when you're when your deck is kind of revolving around it so i'm really hoping to get a lot of value with the sage um you also see obviously city in a bottle main i really enjoy playing it main because it just solves so many problems and i play antiquities mostly so you know i can just put the bottle in it's, it's not really going to hurt me maybe sometimes when i have a loa but then again i can time when i want to play my bottle and if i've got an active library i not just not going to play it you know it's as simple as that also we've got Thomas's coffin for everybody that doesn't know i can use the coffin to put my triskelion or my tetravis into the coffin and then when it comes out it out in the coffin during my uh untap step it comes in with additional counters so it keeps the counters it already had when it came in to the coffin and when it comes out it has those counters on it plus additional counters so for example if i put a triskelion in with three counters put it in the box in tonis's coffin when it comes out the next turn it has six counters so as you can imagine that can be quite powerful and it can get out of hand quickly so um yeah that's that's it and uh, let's go to game one and uh see what's gonna happen 
Game number one is about to start. I'm sitting on the left, obviously with the Timmy playmat, Rich on the right. Let's see, starting here with a basic planes, a Mox Pearl, a Mana Volt. That's a pretty good start, but not a Suchi. A Suchi would have been nice. It's a four drop in this deck. There's a Tundra passing turn. Let's see what else I can do. I need blue to get my Sages on the board. Playing a Chaos Orb. And in response, Rich is playing that Ancestral Recall, drawing three additional cards. So also a very good start here for Rich. A balance from my side would have been nice now as well because I have so many artifacts on the board here. I could just get his hand down in size. But look at that, playing a mock second Tundra, tapping for three. Is there? Yes, there is a Thunder Spirit. Beautiful creature. That means a lot of pressure already. Can I do something with all that mana? If I have six, I can start deploying Triskelion and Tetravuses. But look at that. I'm doing absolutely nothing here. After that very explosive opening, attacking now. Am I going to decide? No, not to flip. I'm going to play a Swords to Plowsiers on this Thunder Spirit. That means two life for Rich and no damage for me. So 22 now for Rich. I'm still on 20 here. Passing turn, untapping my planes. And just passing again. Look at that. Disenchant on my Mox there. I think that Rich is starting to notice that I have a little bit of a mana issue. Deciding here to go for my artifact colored mana. Playing a City of Brass himself, having 5 mana open, maybe he's going to play out a Sarah Angel. Plays out his own Chaos Orb, so again we have 2 Chaos Orbs on the board. And I'm saying again because this happened in our previous game as well. He's going to activate it, it seems. In response, I'm going to... No, he's going to activate it on my land. Look at that, land's gone. Wow, and remember that explosive start that I had with a Plains, a Mox Pearl... And the Mana Volt, and after that, I've basically done absolutely nothing. And wow, I'm, I'm, in a, I'm in a bad shape here. I'm just surprised in how bad of a shape I am. We see a Surrender Pafrit with a Spirit Link, tapping for three, playing another Mana Volt, having two in the pool still, and playing that City in a bottle. That's obviously a big problem for Rich. On the other hand, I mean... It's still not looking great for me and Rich has other creatures that are not Arabian Knight, like the Thunder Spirit, like the Sarah Angel, like the Air Elemental, so he has some options here. Taking damage from the Vault, going to 19, still not finding any other land. Maybe I should have shuffled my deck beforehand, because, I mean, okay, finally an island. Hopefully I can now play out my uh, Sage of Latnam. Playing Sage of Latinam here. Oh, there's a mana drain. Oh, this is very painful. This is very painful. Deciding to use my Chaos Orb here. Going for that Thunder Spirit here. I need to hit this. I, I think it's a miss. Oh, man. When it rains, it pours. So I just lost my Sage of Latin and my only hope to get back into this game, I guess. And I also lost my lost a flip. I missed a flip. And look at that. Even if it would have hit the Thunder Spirit, there is a Sarah Angel taking even two more damage from the Thunder Spirit, but also from the Mana Volts. Finding a Mox Sapphire. What can I do? Copy Artifact. What am I copying? I guess I'm copying a Mana Volt here. But this is really not the kind of game that I want to play. And I'm going to take 6 damage here. That's exactly what's going to happen. Going to 5, taking 2 more damage. And what we're actually discussing, this is quite interesting. Rich used to be a judge, so he knows a lot of the rulings. And I'm asking him here, can I use my copied Mana Vault to untap my other Mana Vault? And he's saying you can do that, but the damage is actually dealt in your draw phase. So if you have a tapped Mana Vault in your draw phase after your upkeep, uh, then you simply are going to get um, the damage. So it doesn't really matter. So I take the damage. I'm deploying a Triskelion here, shooting down the Thunder Spirit, but I'm on three. I mean, this is game. This is it. This is it. <laughs> Only showing... His Italian Sarah Angel there. 
Okay, so uh, it's time for me to look at my sideboard and hopefully I can get some uh, some more lands next turn. I really just need blue lands and a Sage of Lightning. Hopefully. Okay, so let's uh, let's get back to this in uh, game number two. Game number two, and uh, I get to start at least after losing that one again. Starting here with a uh, a Mox Pearl. This time a Tundra and playing a Sage of Latinam turn one. Hopefully it can stick. There's a Tundra of Rich passing turn. So again with that Mox Pearl, very lucky there at least. Can I find some more land? Attacking for one, really? Passing turn, really? Oh my god, <laughs> why did I keep this hand? Maybe because of this Sage turn one. Attacking again, Rich is going to 18. And I'm quite surprised about how this uh, is going so far. Playing a City of Brass, taking a damage and playing a Surrender of Freed. Finding an island, so having three lands now. And let's see if I can do something. I probably want to keep a white open if I have a Swords. So after that he's taken the damage. I can kill the Surrendip. And it's going to 16 now. Obviously taking the risk of him being able to counter it, because he does play with some counter magic. Attacking here for 3. There we see the swords, no counter spells, he's gaining 3 life again, going to 19. Second main phase playing another City of Brass passing turn. And just to clarify, I am playing with a lot of lands in this deck, it's not like I'm light on lands or anything. And there is a Thunder Spirit 2-2 two -two Flyer. And again, I guess I just drew all my swords to plows here, I mean that's possible of course. And that brings Rich back on 20 life again, drawing, or tapping four, I should say, not drawing four, I wish. Playing a Sage, or a Suchi. And let's see what's going to happen. Playing a Disenchant on the Suchi, and I'm deciding to sack it now for a card. And we're actually playing Atlantic Rule, so that means we're playing with Mana Burn. That's why you see my life total going down to 16, because the Suchi is giving me four colorless mana, but I can't use it. I'm actually playing with the playset of Mishra's Factory, so when you have those out, you can use your uh, the mana that you have left and pump them into your Mishra's Factory, uh, making sure you're not burned by any Mana Burn. Um, but in this case, it wasn't possible, so I had nowhere to go with my mana. I'm on 16 now. I did draw a card, so I'm kind of doing what I discussed in the deck tech where when my opponent is trying to get rid of one of my artifacts, I use my Sage to sack it and draw a card for it. Ooh, look at this. There is a Preacher. That's, of course, a dangerous creature. He can tap Preacher to take over. There is a Mana Vault. Take over one of my creatures next turn, because then it doesn't have Summoning Sickness. Tapping six here. Will we see a Triskelion? Yes, there is a Triskelion. So I'm probably going to ping the Preacher. That's exactly what I'm doing. Killing the Preacher here, so Triskelion has two counters left. And remember, I now have that Mana Vault, so I can sack it to Sage of Latinum next turn to actually get a card from it as well. And that's really great when that happens. And I'm really happy that my Sage was able to stick. And now we see a Time Twister here. And Rich unable to get back his two removed creatures because they were removed by the Swords to Plowsiers, and of course I get to shuffle them back in here. And uh, obviously Rich is hoping to draw us into some firepower, but of course I get to draw seven new cards as well. Playing a Mox Pearl, and there is a Swords. Playing it over the Triskelion, so I'm using the Triskelion to deal two damage, too rich, and then sack it for a card. There is a disenchant on the Suchi, so again it's going to give me 4 damage. So I'm on 12 and Rich is on 12, and actually all the damage that I, I got this game has been self-inflicted, continuing that trend, well actually not continuing that trend, because I'm able to sack it to the Sage before my draw step. So I'm on 8 here, uh, 12, sorry, and Rich is on 12. And we both have quite a lot of cards after that Time Twister. Playing a City of Brass of my own here. What can I do? Am I going to use my City again? I mean, I'm dealing so much damage to myself this game. 
Tapping a white, again we see that mana vault. And playing a neutral skull and going, having a nice 4-4. And we see some action here from Rich. It's an ancestral recall. So again, new fuel, new answers to the threats that are on the board. And I'm expecting him to take care of this Triskelion actually before he's going to play out any of his other creatures. At least a smaller one, so we won't see any Thunder Spirits, I think. And let's see. Oh, we do see a Thunder Spirit. Interesting. Interesting choice. Maybe he wants me to use my counters on the Thunder Spirit. Playing a Time Walk here. So he's, wow, he's played all his three blue power cards. Look at a beautiful graveyard. We see Time Twister, Ancestral Recall, and a Time Walk. Attacking now, and I'm deciding to kill the Thunder Spirit. He's replacing it with a new one, and I don't have enough counters anymore to deal with that th uh, Thunder Spirit. Obviously, sacking again the Mana Vault before it deals damage to me. Let's see, playing a copy artifact over my trike, so that means that I can take care of that Thunder Spirit. And Attacking with my other Triskelion, which is still a 2-2, two -two, so he goes to 9. Playing another Tundra. And I have to remember that my opponent is also playing with a balance, so I don't want to deploy too many creatures onto the board, because if he can find a balance, he can easily kill all my creatures. Until now, playing an If Biff Afrit, a 3-3 flyer from the Arabian Nights with that Hurricane mechanic. Finding another Mana Vault, my third Mana Vault already. Playing another Triskelion. Wow, and this is just Triskelion Town. This is this is Triskelion Town here. Sacking all my counters to kill the FBF. Attacking for four here. And this is of course great news for me. Look at that, the beautiful Air Elemental. Beautiful art, beautiful card. I play it in my, uh, in my Timmy deck rich i salute my salute goes to you how do you say that anyway i salute to you i guess <laughs> anyway a great air elemental here i'm actually bringing him to three here using my hercules recall get back all of my artifacts and next turn i'll be able to redeploy them and kill rich basically because i can play out my trikes again wow what a cool way of finishing this second game. Wow. A counter spell. Oh, a counter spell. Nice, Rich. Okay, so that means I'm not there yet. I'm on 12. Second of Volt. Hoping to find something. Preferably a Swords. Although I can take some damage from the Air Elemental, so I probably shouldn't play a Swords. Just take the damage from the Air Elemental. And just play out my other Triskelion's next turn. He is going to hit me here. Going to 8. Beautiful attack with a beautiful creature. Playing another If Biff Afrit. And <laughs> he's actually gonna, gonna kill himself. Gonna, kill, uh, gonna commit suicide. Magic suicide here with the If Biff Afrit. And that means, ladies and gentlemen, it's 1-1. One, one. And that means we're going to game number three game number three and it's a one one and rich gets to start and look at that very nice start double mox not a land play though so he's missing his land drop here can he find a land he's simply passing turn no land found so maybe he just kept this because of the mox and playing a mishra's factory so i'm able to maybe put some pressure on next turn oh look at this that's why he kept his hand because now i also have to discard a card and i'm losing two lands here very nice play, Rich. And there I go, playing a single planes passing turn. So I have to rebuild again. Ah, yeah, man. He's playing a regrowth over a balance. I guess it should be in my advantage knowing that he has a balance, but it doesn't feel like that, to be honest. It feels kind of yucky knowing that he still has that balance. Let's see what Rich is going to do. Maybe he's just going to do nothing and pass turn again, letting me build up and then play a balance. The only good thing is that I'm playing with a lot of non-creature artifacts as well. He's actually discarding a Brain Geyser. So I guess if he had land, he would play them. Playing a Disenchant. Now, this could be important here, what I'm doing. 
because now he doesn't have any white mana anymore so i can start building again with that mox pro out of the way but there's another problem library of alexandria giving rich the possibility to draw into his white lands and now he's throwing away a uh, sword supply here so look at that playing a chaos are going to flip on the library of alexandria this is going to be important uh, uh, oh man i remember this flip so let me get it let me get it straight i missed a flip this is the second flip i'm missing in this matchup and i think i know why because what you saw me do is i'm going kind of towards the camera at the end because i want to get the nice angle why i just want to hit the loa anyway um rich is still in a difficult position because he's not finding any lands and if i can find a city in a bottle i am playing with two of those i can still get rid of the loa but of course i think the game would have been played if i would have hit that um that library and he's finding a white source remember he still has that balance in hand playing Thanos' coffin now Again, you saw me taking four damage, by the way, and that's mana burn from my own Suchi. Activating the library again, so he's drawing tons of cards, cards from that library. And I can tell you, it's really difficult when you know that you've missed a flip on that card, and you can see that card taking such up such a dominant role in a game. It's uh, It's hard. Even more cards after that time walk. And look at that, he's completely coming back into the game. Having tons of mana now, having an active library of Alexandria, having a Chaos Orb on the battlefield. What can I do? I just don't have enough cards, I think. Playing a balance of my own, I have less cards in hand. Trying to deactivate the library of Alexandria with my own balance here. Now, is he going to counter? I believe he's allowing it, so he has to throw away one of his lands and he has to discard two cards here three cards even that means he's going back to four cards in hand oh another one so he's going back to three cards in hand let's hope that he doesn't find uh seriously ancestral recall that's the, that's the card i wanted to mention let's hope he doesn't find ancestral recall because now he can refuel his hand again he's got five drawing into six obviously passing turn so that next turn he can start, um, interesting, playing a copy artifact over the Chaos Orb. In response, he's going to activate it so that I cannot target it. Um, but what I wanted to say, he wants to get back to seven. And boom, he is hitting my Taunus's coffin. And obviously, I am now animating my Mishra's Factory so I can copy artifact my Mishra's Factory. Obviously, I was hoping to copy artifact the Chaos Orb. But um, it's, I mean, it makes sense that Rich activated it upon that, uh, that moment. Oh, divine offering here. Oh, and actually, oh, that's interesting. Rich is getting his life total here on the board. He didn't get any damage yet. So that means he just get the six life. He's on 26. And uh, I'm untapping my Mana Vault. And let's see what I'm doing. Tapping for 6 again. Oh no, I'm attacking. Okay. Dealing some damage here. It was a little bit hard to follow that play, but Rich is on 23. I'm on 16. Oh, and there we see. So this is not a Time Elemental, ladies and gentlemen. This is an Italian Sarah Angel. It's a misprint. So it has the art of the time elemental, but it's got the casting cost of the Sarah Angel. Ah, I'm sorry, Rich. Um, you finally you play the card, and what do what do I do? I play a Swords. At least he gains some life. Also loses four life again. So actually he doesn't gain any life, but he still has that active Library of Alexandria, and that's really the biggest problem here. There's a Sarah Angel hitting the board. Another Swords to Plowsiers. So I am finding those sorts this game. But I need to find a city in a bottle. And that's not a city in a bottle. That's a Sage of Latinam. At least that can draw me some cards as well. And look at Rich go. I mean, how many cards has he drawn from that Library of Alexandria? It's just insane. 
And maybe I should start sacking artifacts to see if I can find my city in a bottle because that's getting more and more important now that the Serenip is on board as well. There's a Triskelion. Sacking it straight away, really looking for that city. And I think I might as well just attack now. If he blocks, I can kill it with my Triskelion. Okay, cancel that. So there is a Swords on my trike. Deciding to take a life and deal some damage here to Rich. Interesting choice. And an attack here, so I'm going to 14, and he's playing a Preacher, ay ay ay. A Preacher would have been perfect, a perfect target for my trike. Let's see, can I find another, yes, I can find another Triskelion, so I guess that's lucky. Oh no, oh no, a Mana Drain. So that means he's drawing. He's gaining, getting six land next turn, but let's see if he can use it, because if he can't use it, that means mana burn. If he has a Brain Geyser, the game is pretty much over. Let's see, attacking here for four, so he's going to 15. Now he's got to use up that six mana, taking damage first from his Surrender Pafrit. Let's see what's going to happen. He's going to draw another card. Oh, man, that low eyes. It's killing me. He shouldn't have that Loa if I've just hit the flip. Anyway, he is looking up something here. It's actually really nice to play with Rich because he used to be a judge, so I can just ask him anything. And he's playing a disenchant over the copy artifact because what he was looking up is, is the copy artifact still also an enchantment despite the fact that it's now a Mishra's factory, so it's a land. And it actually is. So he's taking over my Sage of Letnam, by the way, with the Preacher. And he's dealing me some Surrender of Free damage in the process. And now, oh yeah, I remember this moment. He didn't use his six mana. So he's taking the full six damage from that mana drain. So he's taking mana burn quite seriously. Going to eight, I'm attacking him for two now. So if I can deal him damage, he's actually going to six. So I still have a chance here. Oh, playing telekinesis, nice. So that means my creature, my mistress factory gets tapped and it doesn't untap in the next two turns. That's why I'm putting two counters on there. And it's really cool to see this card, Telekinesis, in action. And tapping here with the Sage of Latin. I'm going to 7. And it's going to be curious. It's going to be very interesting here. He's actually sacking the Mox with my Sage. So he's drawing a card. As if he doesn't have enough cards already. What is he going to do? Tapping to blue. There is a Black Lotus. Interesting, he's actually playing a Time Elemental. I'm uh, sorry, a Time Twister. Interesting choice, because he is giving me seven cards now as well. Then again, he's been so dominant this game, but one, I'm really, I'm still keeping my hopes up to find that city in a bottle. Playing a Spirit Link. Going in for 3, meaning that he will go to 10, but I found a sword, so he still goes to 10, but I'm not taking any damage. So he's back on 10 again, I'm on 10 again. It's actually quite an interesting game that we've got here. And I need to get rid of that Preacher to get my Sage back. I need to get rid of that Loa, I need to do a lot of things actually. Playing, there is a Swords. I've played so many Swords this, this game. Getting my Sage tapped back, but in, but tapped, of course. Paying four here, playing a Suchi, playing a Mana Vault, passing turn here. I mean, maybe I should just splash one Fireball in this, in this brew, just because I get so many Mana Vaults and Suchis and whatever. Oh, Divine Offering, probably over my Suchi, meaning I take more damage, going to 6. 
Actually, this is a mistake from my part because I can pump those four mana into my Mistress Factory. It doesn't matter that it's tapped. I can still animate it. So this is a big mistake from my part here. And there is a flip. And he's actually missing the flip. I don't know what he was flipping on. Rich, do you remember? If you're watching this video, maybe you can tell me. Was it the Sage? I would, I would go for the Sage, I think. And taking off my last counter and I, I just can't believe I took that that mana burn damage because I can just pump that into my mistress factory that's such a huge mistake here anyway oh playing a low of my own that's very helpful being on six life and everything okay paying tons of mana taking damage from my own city interesting oh playing a brain geyser that is pretty cool, playing a huge Brain Geyser, probably activating my Loa in the process. Wow, and I'm, I'm kind of in card drawing heaven here, but I'm only on 5 life. I should have been on 9, but okay. Tapping my Sage, sacking my Volt, drawing another card. I mean, I've already played two swords. Probably still hoping to find that bottle. But all I'm doing is throwing away two cards. Yuck, that's not great. Passing turn. So he stays on 15 here. He's probably gonna attack me. Oh, that's so mean playing at strip mine. You've you've had your low of the whole the whole game, man. Anyway, I would have done exactly the same thing, Rich. Exactly the same thing. Uh oh, now he's playing a balance. Interesting choice. But it makes sense, so now I have to discard tons of cards. What a game, what a game. It feels like this game is like one of those games where you have three or four games in one, you know what I mean? It's quite crazy here. I'm trying to select what I'm going to discard. And look at that, Control Magic is absolutely of no use with that Spirit Link. And actually, Spirit Link is a nice way to kind of disable the control magic of your opponent. Playing a Triskelion, that's not going to help me. Going to one here, playing a copy. Okay, 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 that explains it. And then I can use it to kill the Surrender Pafrit. Okay, but I'm on one life. Wow, what a game. If, if I can still, if I win this one, it's a miracle. And there he goes, playing a Thunder Spirit. Probably knows that I'm going to target it. And now he plays his Brain Geyser, refilling his hand. Taking care here of the Thunder Spirit. And putting my, my, my City of Brass aside, because I'm only in one, so if I tap it, I'm dead. Attacking him for four here. Playing a Suchi. And actually pointing out that I can now start pumping my excess mana into my Mishra's Factory. Look at that, playing an Ancestral Recall. Of course, go ahead, refill your hand again. My goodness. Wow, playing a Thunder Spirit. It's really nice to, to kind of see Rich's deck really working in, in, all, in all cylinders here. And I'm playing, interesting, playing a Hercules Recall. So that means that my Sage will have, or my Triskelion will have three counters again. If it doesn't get countered by Rich, of course. Tapping two here. Interesting. I think I need six mana to play my Triskelion to take care of, I'm counting now, to take care of his Thunder Spirit. And that's exactly what I'm doing. Keeping open one white. Taking care of the Thunder Spirit, passing turn here. This is really an interesting battle, and you can see how how good Hercules Recall is in a brew with Triskelions and Tetravites. Tetravuses. Do you say Tetravites? Anyway, you know what I mean. We haven't seen them yet, actually. I haven't played them. Oh, this is nice. Nice from Rich and Air Elemental. Okay, you know what? If you're going to kill me, then do it with the Air Elemental at least. That's a cool creature. But of course, I still have a turn to kind of find an answer here. Uh, first looking at my mana. 
Fapping 2, playing a copy artifact over my Triskelion. There is a disenchant in response over the trike, so I cannot use it as a target anymore. That is a big problem. That is a big problem. Looks like I'm thinking about it now, what to do. I'm sacking it to the Sage. And I choose to copy my Soul Ring so I have more mana, so I can possibly play out another 6 drop. And there it is, I'm actually playing a blocker. That is pretty nice. So if Richard doesn't have a disenchant or a swords, I can block and tra oh, there's a disenchant. Okay, okay. <laughs> oh man. Oh what a brilliant game. Oh man, Rich. Congratulations. This is a well deserved victory. Oh what a match, man. And it's so nice. It's so nice to play against a player who's not afraid to just play out a time twister and say, you know what? Let's refill both of our hands and just go for it. I really appreciate that. I really like your deck. I love the choices for the Thunder Spirits. I really like that air elemental in your brew. Um, I'm actually pointing out the two Sedina bottles. Oh, I think I'm showing that I've boarded them out because I assumed that he was going to... Um, um, he was going to board out his Arabian Night creatures. So, yeah, Thomas, that is a huge mistake. Don't do that. Just just keep them in. Keep them in. So next time I'm going to keep them in. And I'm going to take my time to flip on Loas. But Rich, congratulations. Beautiful deck. Here is the winning deck for you. So you can have a good close look at this deck. For now, thank you for watching Timmy Talks. The channel where we talk old school magic. And um, if you want to support the channel, you can do so by subscribing, liking, leaving a comment, share this wonderful game on your socials. And um, yeah, let me know, you know, tell me what I did wrong, because I think I did a lot of things wrong in this, in this game. Um, what else is there? Of course, we need to take a moment for the patrons of Timmy Talk, because I have a Patreon page. If you have a moment, please take a look at my Patreon page. I would really, really appreciate it. Um, for now, let's go to our end scroll and take a look at our patrons. Just think it's a samba kazee!